an apology. It was cold on the beaches when the sun fell into the sea. The Greeks huddled behind their wall. They could smell meat cooking on the Trojan fires just beyond their defenses. They were afraid. Agamemnon walked along the beach, touched his tall ships, prayed to Zeus, and decided to call together the war council. When they had gathered, he lifted his powerful head, and they saw tears in his eyes. Ten years ago, he said, I told you that Zeus promised me we'd destroy the mighty tower of Troy and bring back Helen with 1,000 Trojan women. He, was abandoned. he has abandoned me. The chiefs were appalled as Agamemnon went on. I believe we must launch our ships for, for home. Troy will never fall to us. He looked away from their accusing eyes. They knew he was testing t them this time. Diomedes stood up and said what the others felt. I blame you. Your stupid argument with Achilles over a woman lost us the great fighter. You accused others of cowardice. You should have set an example. Courage is the secret of power. Zeus may have given you the imperial specter and the homage it deserves, he went on, but he didn't give you the courage. If you want to go, go. If anyone else wants to go with you, then I say go. I'll stay and fight, alone if I have to. We shall win. The gods will, will us to. As the men applauded Diomedes, Nestor, the wise, rose to speak. Agamemnon, son of Arterius, king of men, he said formally, Zeus made you high king of great people. You must remember not only to give advice, but also to listen to it. Nestor looked around him, and everyone present hung on his words. You must bring Achilles back into the fold. Apologize to him. There was a long pause. Agamemnon slowly lifted his head and looked at the circle of silent men. The fire cast flickering shadows over their battle-weary faces. Agamemnon, king of men, bowed his head. I will do it, he said, and I will get, give him great gifts. When we return home, he can choose a wife from my three daughters. Briseis will be sent back to him. She has not been touched since she has been at my camp. Send her message to ask Achilles if he will hear me. He sat down among the chiefs as they chose the messengers to fight the offer to Achilles. Ajax was to go with Odysseus, the old fox, whom the chiefs thought Achilles might listen to most favorably. While the messengers set out along the foreshore, foreshore to Achilles' encampment, Nestor and Diomedes sent sentries to guard the walls and ditch that kept the Trojans at bay. A bright moon reflected silver over the calm waters of the sea. As Ajax and Odysseus approached Achilles' hut, they heard the sound of the silver lyre. As the two messengers entered the hut, they were confronted by Patroclus, who sat listening to his friend. Achilles stopped playing and stood up politely for the two older men. You are welcome, Lords Odysseus and Ajax. I have heard, Lord Ajax, that you are magnificent in combat against the mighty Hector. And also, Lord Odysseus, that you have sent many Trojans into, night that never end, into the night that never ends. Please sit and eat. The men drank wine together. Achilles knew why the two men had come, but he gave no sign. They ate grilled meat brought to them by Patroclus, and eventually Odysseus judged them judged the time was right. My lord, he began, as Achilles also spoke. Odysseus. Both men stopped and smiled, and Achilles politely indicated that Odysseus should speak first. We face disaster. The Trojans are at our walls, threatening destruction. Zeus favors them. Hector has run berserk through our army and fears no one. He waits impatiently for the dawn so that he can send our ships up in flames and slaughtered us all by their charred hulls. There is no mercy shown. None. Your father was my dear friend, Odysseus went on. Achilles sat silent. I know he told you that the goddess Athena and Hera would make you strong. Keep a check on your pride and remember kindness is best. We need you. We Greeks need the mighty Achilles, and Agamemnon admits his faults to you. Odysseus and Ajax told the silent Achilles of the gifts Agamemnon had promised. They begged him to accept the gift and come to fight with them. If you can't forgive Agamemnon the wrongs he has done, then pity our warriors who has exhausted and faced tomorrow with fear in their hearts. Ajax pleaded with the silent man. Odysseus offered his tempt him temptation. Hector yells across no man's land that there is no Greek to match him, no one who can beat him. Maybe that's the truth, said the old fox silkily. Achilles looked up, and for a moment Odysseus thought he had hooked his man, but Achilles shook his head. Odysseus, I struggled day in and day out, year in and year out, and received no thanks from Agamemnon. Then he took my prize. He pretended to be brave, but he rewarded the cowards. We had fought hard, mighty Ajax, and you too, Odysseus, who knew my father. I do not respect Agamemnon. 
We are here to take home Helen, wife of Menelaus. Maybe Menelaus loves Helen. Maybe Helen loves Paris. I know I love Briseis. Agamemnon took her and gives her back untouched and no doubt will take her again if he chooses to because he is high king. I will not fight for him. Odysseus tried to persuade the younger man. Achilles took his head sad, shook his head sadly. When I was fighting, no Trojan came with a bow, within a bowshot of our ships. Now they sit outside the walls and wait for the morning light. Then they will fall on the ships with blazing torches. So be it. Tomorrow I load my ships, make an offering to Zeus, and leave. At dawn, look out the sea, and you will see my men in their oars, and the fish dancing in the water beside us. Tell your king that I will take my prizes, all save Briseis, whom I love, more than gold, silver, iron, or bronze, but not more than my honor, which has been insulted. Tell him in front of the other chiefs, and don't come again. Agamemnon is crazy, jealous, and grasping, and he has his reward. As for his gifts, I like them as little as I like the man. I would not have any daughter of his as my wife, as lovely as Aphrodite, or as clever as Athena, though they may be. No thank you, not for me. The messengers collected their cloaks as Achilles finished speaking and walked slowly to the door of the hut. Before they stopped, stepped into the darkness, he added quietly, I honor you, Ajax, for your courage, and you, my lord Odysseus, for your cunning. I believe Zeus will not let Troy be taken, so I suggest that you two sail for home in the, on the morning tide. The messenger waited. He went on. I swear this, even if I stay, I will not think of battle unless Prince Hector, son of wise Priam, reaches my warrior ships. If he tries to torch my black ships, Hector may find himself stopped. Odysseus and Ajax walked away from Achilles' ships, which lay close enough to the water for it to lap against the hulls. Both men were disappointed, but their failure took change by their cha failure to change Achilles' mind. They took his message to Agamemnon's hut, where the chieftains waited. Odysseus told them bluntly and left them ap appalled and angry. My lord, said Diomedes, you have fed his pride by making your offer. He's a stiff-necked man. We must be ready for the attack that is surely coming at dawn. I suggest we try to sleep. They stepped out into the moonlight. All around them lay shapes of warriors lying under blankets and lion skins, sleeping.